So I get the golf cart tires off and I bring them down and turns out that they're not the right size. They're not going to fit. So I'm thinking that hopefully it'll be able to take them back. I, I know the manager pretty well. I've been hanging out there for 20 plus years. So I figured I could use some of my tutelage to get in with the guy and get the tires back. Look at his split, but he's all telling me that they never return tires. No! General Tech! What do you want? Is that any way to talk to kinfolk? Well, I can see you've been digging in the garbage again. What are you talking about? This is a top of the line weed snipper. This is an echo. You mean echo. That's what I said. What, is there an echo in here? All right, all right, all right. What do you want? Well, I couldn't get it to start. The problem is I put the weed snipper on the ground, pull the starter rope up, but the weed snipper stays on the ground. So what you're saying is it won't start? Yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell you. What, is there an echo in here? All right, let me take a look at it. You're lucky you're family. Otherwise, you'd be waiting three weeks like everyone else. You are lucky. He won't even look at mine, and I'm practically like family. Ha! Yeah, the side of the family tree that doesn't fork. It's got no compression. That's why it was in the garbage, because it's garbage. Oh, come on. Grandpa Dactyl said you could fix anything. I thought you was Terrell fixes all. All right, I'll take a look at it. Got no air filter in it. Someone took the air filter out. Sucked in a bunch of dirt. Probably gonna need a short block. Short block's about 130 bucks, and then the labor to put it in, you're probably looking at 200 bucks. You ain't got $200. Here. $200? Can't you do it any cheaper? What, don't I get the family discount? The family discount is do it yourself. Do you think I can do it myself? If you have to ask me if you can do it yourself, that tells me you can't do it yourself! Whoa, this gets pretty intense. Family for you. Fine, I will fix it myself, cuz. But I need to ask one thing of you. What's that, cuz? Can I fix it here at your shop? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can fix it here. I want to see this. Gerald Jack Derriere here. And today's how-to video is on how to replace a short block engine on an Echo SRM280 weed snipper. Now the first thing you want to do is separate the engine from the main pipe assembly. We'll start by removing the air filter cover. And we're going to pull the throttle trigger. You see how that carburetor arm moved there, Mr. Cameraman? We're going to hold that open with one finger, get you a little screwdriver, and lift up on that cable. Sometimes you've got to pull it back a little bit. Lift up and release the carburetor arm. Get you a 10 millimeter wrench. Loosen this screw. A couple little turns there, and this piece comes out. There's two kill wires right here, and you have to separate them. They come apart like that. One's a male, one's a female. Now we can remove the engine assembly from the main pipe. There's a four millimeter Allen head right there. And all you need to do is loosen it a couple, three turns, and the entire engine will slide right off. Now I want to get this out of the way. Why don't you just unclamp it from there, knucklehead? Oh, okay. Okay, the next step is to remove the plastic muffler cover. And one screw is longer than the other. It's a four millimeter, and I'm gonna use this power driver to do that. Take a look at those screws. The longer one goes in the front. And what I like to do is lay them out in order as I take them out. 
I pick them up, I put them over here, I take the muffler cover off and set it right over those screws. So when you go to put it back together, you wonder, where are the screws? Where are the screws? Oh, there they are, right there. Okay, next, we disconnect the spark plug wire. And again, there's a short screw right here. See that, little short screw. And right on top is a longer screw. Set those over here. They're next in line. You can pull this muffler cover or the top engine cover off. Set it right on top of the screws. Now we can take the front clutch cover off. And again, four millimeter. Now, here's where you're gonna need a flat blade screwdriver. You can put it right in this spot, right here. See that? And just pry up on it a little bit. And you're gonna wanna wiggle that cover off all the way around. There we go. Now, take a look at this, Mr. Cameraman. See those little locator pins? Sometimes one of them will stick right in one of those holes on the short block. You wanna make sure to get those out and put them back into the cover. And this is the tool to get them out. You just kind of grab it, wiggle it, and there it is. So if they stick inside the engine block there, just put them back in their hole. Use your special hammer, and you're all set. Okay. The next step that I like to do on these is to take off the carburetor and the gas tank as an assembly. And to do that, we take out these two screws. These are Phillips head. And I take off this air filter box. We want to make sure to clean all that dirt out of there. We don't want any more dirt ingestion. Dirt doesn't taste good. No. I'll set that off to the side. And there's this plate here and this plate here. And you notice there's gaskets on there. See the gasket right there? See how it's loose? Sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. And remember, this plastic cover, then the aluminum cover, and it's got a little notch cut out in it. And that notch goes on there just like that. Set these off to the side. Then there's three screws that hold the gas tank assembly on. Now what you can do is take the whole carburetor and gas tank assembly, set it off to the side with the screws, and keep it all in line. Next thing we do is going to take off the carburetor insulator, the isolator block. That's this thing right here. There's two screws in there. And there's a gasket. It's either going to stick on here or it's going to stick on the block. And that has got to be perfectly cleaned off of there. And I'm going to show you a special trick to clean that off. The next thing you want to do is remove the ignition module from the engine. Sure looks like you've done this before. Yeah, sure has. No, it's my first time. We're going to take out two four millimeter Allen head screws out of the ignition module. Now you want to watch because there's a couple of little spacers behind there and I'll show them to you. Just remember that they're there so you don't lose them. What I do is just kind of tilt the engine down a little bit and see that spacer on there? There are two plastic spacers, one on each screw. So just be aware that they're there and don't lose them. If they fall down into the engine, you just dump the engine back over like that and they'll come out. Then we take off the starter assembly and there's four screws for that. And I put the screws down over here and I take the starter cover off and put it right on top of them screws. Then we're gonna switch over to a 13 millimeter and take off this nut that secures the starter part here, just like that. 
set it down. Now there's a couple ways to remove this. Echo makes a special tool and the part number is 91114. Can you get that Mr. Cameraman? Okay. They make a special tool that you can put on here and just get that piece to come right off. You use it as leverage. But another way that I've done them is you get yourself a, a softer face hammer like a brass or bronze hammer and just give it a little tap and it unthreads just like that. Put that over that nut and then flip the engine over and we're going to take off the clutch assembly. Again, it's 13 millimeter. There's two bolts and there's a real thin washer under the head of this bolt up on each side. See that thin washer there? It's kind of like a wave washer. Don't lose it. It's got to be there. You set those down and then you remove the clutch shoes and underneath the clutch shoes are two washers. See that? There's two of them there. We'll set those down. After you get the two washers that were underneath the clutch shoe assembly, get those off, there's a 13 millimeter nut right there. Now the way my cousin Terrell does this, he loosens that nut till it's flush with the end of the crankshaft. I have already done that. And he picks it up with one hand, takes a brass punch like this and starts whacking on that thing until the flywheel pops off. And that works just fine. There's no problem doing that. But Echo makes a special tool, and I'm going to show you that. So we remove the nuts, get it out of your way, set it off to the side. Echo makes this special puller that has two studs that thread right into those holes where the clutch shoe bolts were located. You run those down just finger tight, put this little spacer in there, it sits on top of the crankshaft, and then this plate goes on top. And you got to make sure that everything lines up. Can you see in there, Mr. Cameraman? Okay, everything lined up. And then I got two washers from a crawler. I set those on there because they don't come with washers. And I thought it would be better if they had washers. Get the nuts started on there. And then you tighten those nuts up. And I know what some of you out there are thinking. Is he really going to use that impact to remove that clutch? You bet I am. Watch. See that? Comes right off. Now, you get that puller off. I run them nuts out. Just like that. And see there's a magnet on there. Pull, sucks them nuts right up to it. Yeah, and you could have just used a brass bar like I do. Uh -huh. Instead of wasting all your money on them tools. Now, every once in a while, one of these does not want to come out. So you just get your little 10 millimeter in, give it a squank, and out it comes. Now, don't forget about that spacer right there in the middle. There we go. Set your flywheel off to the side. And what do we got left? We got this plastic cover right here. It comes out with a Fill up screwdriver, that's one of the cold air intake vents for this cooling air of the engine. That just comes off like that. And we got the muffkin to take off. Now, some of these have a four millimeter Allen head right there that you gotta loosen to get the muffkin off. But in this case, since we're replacing the whole short box, we wanna take that completely out. So we'll switch back to our four millimeter bit Get that screw right on out. Then, to get the muffkin off, you need an eight millimeter or a 5 16 socket or a wrench. There's two nuts that hold the muffkin on. Loosen them up. Now, I'm gonna tell you, somebody has been in here before because there's supposed to be some lock washers underneath these two nuts right here and they are missing. They're serrated washers that keep these nuts locked on there. So if yours are missing, go to the Echo dealer, have them look up the part and get you a couple of them washers. This plate comes off, it's like a pressure plate, and then the muffkin comes off, just like that. Here's the gasket, throw that away. And these two bolts, they slip right in and out of here. So if they fall out on you when you're doing that, don't get all worried. They just slip right in and out like that. 
Now, there is the entire short block. And we still got the spark plug in there. Let's get that out of the way. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this cylinder off of here. And we're going to take a look at what happened. So to do that, there's four, four millimeter screws in there. Four millimeter Allen head screws. And off comes the cylinder. Now, take a look at that. Looky there. There's all, that's on the intake side. That's where the carburetor was. That's where all the wear is. You see all them scratches in there? You see all that? That's the damage that dirt does to these engines. And it's actually almost or more expensive to get a cylinder and a new piston versus getting the whole entire short block assembly. And so dirt got down into the crankcase on this, the bearings could be damaged as well. So it makes more sense to replace the entire assembly. You sure you haven't done this before? No, oh, it's the first time. Come on, cuz, don't you believe me? No. You seem to know an awful lot about this little weed sniffer. Well, I've done a little reading on the inner screen. You know everything on there is true. And you know what I do after I take something like that apart, don't you? What's that? I throw it across the room. Okay, here is a brand new short block engine. The part number is SB1091. This fits Echo SRM 280s, 280Ts, 280Us, and it fits all those engines. It works on all of them. So we're gonna open this up. And inside here, you're gonna have a package of gaskets and you can see there's that new muffin gasket I was talking about. Set that off to the side. Get rid of this box. Take it out of the bag and it's got this little tag on there. I just give that wire a little yank and it comes right off. Pretty simple. Now since the muffler was the last thing we took off, it's going to be the first thing that goes on. Now I want to talk a little bit about these mufflers. Inside here is a catalytic converter. Believe it or not, they got emission control devices on these little two-stroke engines. And if the catalytic converter gets plugged up, you're going to experience a lack of power and the tone or the sound of the engine is going to change. So that would be one thing that you could check. And also, inside here, I'll get a flashlight so Mr. Cameraman can see it. Inside there is the exhaust port, and sometimes carbon will build up on there. But I think that would be a good video topic for my cousin Terrell to do on another video. Anyway, we'll get back to this. So, let's get our new gasket. I'll open this up with my teeth. Well, I, I think I need to go to the dentist. Now, where did you get that short block? I was dumpster diving. Where? Over at Gordy's? I'm not telling. You found a brand new short block in, the, in a dumpster. What a coincidence, huh? <laughs> okay, so we're going to get our new gaskets. We'll just set those off to the side. We'll use them when we need them. So to put the muffler back on, we get the two bolts. We slide that one in there and that one in there. We get our gasket and line up those holes with the bolts and just slide that right down. Then we can take the muffler and put it on, do the same thing, we'll line up the bolt holes, and we're gonna have to kinda hold this part of that gasket down and out of the way so we can slide that on, then it goes right back up. We take our plate, put it on there, then those two serrated washers would go on, and then the nuts. Now, Could you just put two lock washers on there? Well, I suppose you could. Smarty pants. Okay, just run those down finger tight. That's all you need for right now. Then we get our little driver and we put our third screw on there. And we put that right back in this hole. Don't cross thread it. We just want to run that down to right about there. Then we get our eight millimeter socket. 
run the two mopkin nuts down and give them a good snugging. And one little quick tip here is after you run this thing for about 15 minutes, let it cool down and snug these back up again. Sometimes they have a tendency to get just a little bit loose. We'll go ahead and tighten that bolt down. There you go. Get these bags out of the way, we don't need those. Next thing that goes on is the air intake screen. This keeps out all the big stuff and it just slips right on there. There's a little, little finger that catches right on this edge, right here. Set that down. Get your Phillips screwdriver. And snug that up good and tight. Okay? Now, next thing we put on is the flywheel. Usually these have a lot of dust. I went ahead and blew all that dust off of there but there's a keyway right there. You see that keyway, Mr. Cameraman? And on the engine, on the engine right here is a key. So what you want to do, take the key and the keyway, line them up, and just slide that right on. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it a little bit. Now, there's a 13 millimeter nut. We're gonna switch back over to our 13 millimeter. Put that in there, and I know what y'all are saying. Is he really gonna start that nut with that impact driver? You bet I am. See how easy that was? Now listen, if you folks at home don't feel comfortable doing it, don't do it! It ain't rocket science here. This ain't the space shuttle. We ain't going to the moon. Alright, so now, what's next? The ignition module. Remember these two little spacers? Right there. Right there. Oop, oop, oop. Can I get that on there? Don't put it on without them spacers. Now these here, I can usually get, and what you want to do, see that magnet there? Turn that away so it ain't sucking that coil down. You put those two in there, get them lined up, and get them started with your fingers. Just like that. Now you take your four millimeter driver bit, put it in one of them, run it down to just barely touching, and what you want to do is lift up on this ignition model. See how it slides? See that movement there? Lift up on it. And just snug those screws up just a little bit. You don't have to bear down on them real tight. Just enough to keep it up there. Now, Echo makes a special tool for adjusting the air gap. And here's the tool. The part number is 91004. It's 14 thousandths or 0.35 millimeters. It's an ignition air gap gauge. And what you do is you find the magnets. There's a counterweight right here, and then there's magnets right there. If you're not sure, get you a tool. If it sticks on there like that, you know you found the magnets. So we turn the magnets so it's lined up with the two poles of the ignition module and then we slip this air gap gauge in there. Now, if you don't have that special tool, guess what? They gave you a piece of card stock right here. You could use that. You could use a business card. And that'll work. That'll get you close enough and it'll be just fine. So now what we do is once we got that magnet lined up, we're going to loosen these two screws. And if you can catch it, Mr. Cameraman, you're going to see that coil move. You're going to see it jump down. You might even hear a click. You ready? Oh, I didn't even hear it. It's so quiet. But what's happened now, I'm going to leave the screws loose. If you can feel tension on this spacer, this little card here, you know that the coil, the magnet, has pulled the coil down tight. And then you just snug these up. and you rotate the flywheel to get your spacer out of there. Simple, simple. Next thing we do is I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to clean, how to clean up some metal parts. And what I do is without taking off any metal, you don't want to use sandpaper or anything like that because sometimes these are rusty. You just want to rub them on a piece of wood and that's enough 
to get them smooth because what happens is if these aren't smooth and clean the clutch is gonna stick okay just like that we're gonna use that again I brought with me a little anti sneeze and I like to put a little bit of that on these washers and to do that I just use my finger get a little bit on there and set that right on there same with this one you don't need much of this stuff okay now this is important wipe your paws off you don't want that anti seize getting on the friction material of the clutch because you're going to have to handle this there's something special about this clutch too it's directional and if you put it on the wrong way the clutch will not expand out to the clutch drum and your engine will just sit there and rev up but the weed eater head won't turn you're going to be wondering why my weed eater head don't turn it's because you got the clutch on upside down i'm going to clean this off a little bit and get a flashlight and you're going to see an arrow on there can you see that arrow right there mr cameraman okay that arrow is the direction of rotation and if you look at the fins on this flywheel you'll see that the fins are curved and they're curved this way and that arrow wants to go in the same direction as those fins now i'm going to get a little penetrating oil give it a shake I'll show you a little trick i learned you want to take a rag shop towel something like that and clean this out there's a little bit of rust on there you can see that and what i do is just put a little bit of penetrating oil on that rag and run it around now if these things are strong enough you can take it and spin that clutch shoe assembly around and see all that stuff coming off on there that's what you want to get out of there because that can cause the clutch shoe to stick you do one side then do the other so now we make sure that our arrow is going in the right direction Let's see, where's the arrow? Oh, there it is, right there. Okay, you want that facing up towards you, facing counterclockwise. We're just going to set that right on top of there, nice and gentle-like, just like that, okay? Then, we're going to take these, these are shoulder, shoulder bolts, see that? We're going to use a little bit of that penetrating oil on there, and just wipe off any rust, anything that might be on there do both of them just like that you want those clean and free of rust i put just a little bit of anti sneeze on there just a little bit you don't want a whole lot just a little film and then carefully just set that right down in there run it down now the shoulder may get stuck on that hole just wiggle the clutch shoes a little bit and it'll go all the way down. Get the other one, get it started, run it down. Then what you want to do is snug them up. Just like that. Now here's a little trick I learned. How do you know if those clutch shoes are going to return back to normal again? Well, you hold on to the flywheel you put a screwdriver here, pry it out, and then release it, and it should snap back. See that? Snap back, snap back, snapping back, snappy snap. Check the other side. Snap, snap. There you go. Nothing to it. Okay, so now we're going to put the starter back together. We just thread that on there. And I just take a little hammer and give it a little tap. You can tighten it up that way, or you can use a special tool. Either way, whatever floats your boat. Then we take the nut to get it started. Tighten it up. Okay, next thing we're going to do is put the starter back on. There's four screws. There are four millimeter Allen head. And this starter has a cutout right there. See that cutout? It goes right over that intake screen. So you want to make sure to get that lined up just right. And there it fits nice and flush. So we get our four starter screws and you get those started in there. I know what you're saying at home. Is he really going to use that impact to start them little screws? 
you're darn right I am. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it, don't do it. See how easy that is? I cross them. Just like torquing a cylinder head or oil pan. Cross them up. Okay, there you go. Next, we're going to put on our isolator block. That's this thing right here. And see how there's a little bit of gasket material? This is a phenolic resin type material. In other words, it's some kind of plastic. And you don't want to use a sharp knife on there too aggressively. Now, I do use a razor box cutter like to scrape that gasket off. But when I get down to this last little bit, I get my Mr. Block of wood and I push down real hard and I rub that on there. Can you see all that coming off there? That's all coming off there. Looky there. Nice and clean. That surface is nice and smooth and clean. I get a little bit of shop air. Blow all the boogers out. We got two screws right here. And here's the new gasket. And look, that gasket is directional. And it must line up with the hole in the bottom of this isolator block. And it must line up with the hole in the engine. If it doesn't, the carburetor ain't going to pump no fuel because that's how it gets the pressure and vacuum to operate and oscillate the fuel pump in the carburetor. So what I do, I get the two screws in there and you can see that hole is right there. It goes all the way through. I take that gasket and put it, oops, see I got it wrong. Put it right on there just like that. I turn it over and you see how I'm holding that, okay? Keep it in line. Line it up, and these screws stick out just a little bit where you can get them started. And then you can use a four millimeter Allen driver and run them down. Now this is important. See this kill wire off the coil? Make sure it's not behind there where it gets pinched. And before I tighten these all the way down, what I do is I take a look. And you see that green gasket in there? I make sure that it's lined up properly. There and there. You can get a good view of it from the back side of it. When it's lined up properly, then you can just go ahead and snug these screws down. And again, I don't tighten one side down real, real tight at first. I run them both down equally and I do it in about two or three stages where I just equally torque them down. And I'm sure the Echo has some kind of torque specification for these. I just get them good and tight so I know they won't vibrate loose. Okay, the kill wire drops down in, right in there, and then the ignition wire goes right like that. Next thing we're gonna do is install the gas tank and carburetor assembly. And here's my three screws for the gas tank. There's one, two and three right there. They go right in the corresponding hole. So I just set the short block assembly down on there. Next, we're gonna put the carburetor plate. And since it comes with a new gasket, I'm gonna use a new gasket. It's gonna go right on the back there, just like that. And we're going to have this plate, so we have a gasket up against the isolator block, the spacer plate here, another gasket, which is going to go right up against here on the back of this spacer, and then there's another gasket right here on the carburetor. It's stuck on there. And the way that I do that is I take this part here. I'm going to clean this part out. I spray a little carburetor cleaner in there, just like that. A little bit of shop air. Watch your eyes now, Mr. Cameraman. Get that nice and clean. Is that clean enough or do we need to do some more? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Good enough for who it's for. So the way I do this is this seal right here, this round black O-ring looking thing, goes right up against this air cleaner, air filter housing. Just like that. Okay? Then, We got a gasket on there. This one goes on. We got a gasket on there. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but it says 1530 stamped in there. 
Can you see that, Mr. Cameraman? 1530. And see that corner cut out? That corner cut out is going to go on the lower left side as you're looking at it. Just like that. So we know that we can put that right on here. Then we take our last gasket, put it on there, make sure everything is lined up. And this gasket, this one here, all these gaskets are directional. You see how they have some little holes down at the bottom there? See those holes? Those holes have to line up. One of them has to line up with that right there. And you can see that spot that's cut out lines up right there. That's so that that can operate the fuel pump in the carburetor, carburetor. Then we're going to set that on there, get the screws lined up, get our Phillips screwdriver. The front clutch cover, that's right over here. We'll get the clutch cover. Now let me ask you something about that clutch. What's that, cuz? And it's got that arrow on there. Yes, sir. Is there an arrow on the other side too? No, sir. I've never seen one on so the other side. So why don't you just tell them to put it on with the arrow on the outside? Because this is my first time doing it. I told you that. How many times? Gee whiz. So we get our locating pins and we get them right in there. Set it in and see how it goes nice and flush right there. Everything is nice and flush all the way around, except that spot right there, because that's where you put the screwdriver when you want to lift up on it. These engineers were actually thinking ahead a little bit and they helped the mechanics out just a little bit. Okay, now we got three screws to put in and you're saying at home, wait, there's four holes in there. Where are you gonna put that three screws? Well, if you remember, the muffler cover had one screw that went right here and that was the longer one that I was telling you all about. So we're gonna leave that one out for right now. So what I do, take one of them screws and yes, I'm gonna start them with the impact. Here we go. Next thing we do is put the top cover on the cylinder and it goes down on there. You're gonna have to fiddle with this a little bit. Just work it on there, you'll see how it goes. You gotta get it lined up just right in there, it just drops right on. Now I'll tell you, sometimes this is the vent for the fuel tank and it just goes right up in there. So at any point you can just slip it right up in that hole. Now, what I like to do, since these screws, this one especially, is going right into the top of the cylinder head. I like to put a little anti-sneeze on there because what happens is if they stay in there a long time with all that heat and the moisture and everything in the air, they can rust in there and that screw will snap when you go to try to take it out. So we just put it right in there, get it started, run it down, but don't tighten it up just yet. We want a little bit of wiggle room. And the reason is this short screw this one here that goes in the front of the cover, right here, you want to have just a little bit of play on there. And most of the time they just start right in there, but sometimes you need to wiggle the cover and line it up. So then I snug this one up, and then I snug this one up. There we go. Next thing we do, we get our muffin cover. And this has got a little hook right here. See that hook? That hook has to go right into that slot. So I kind of lift it up, work it down, put the gasket underneath there. Oops, see it popped out. Pop back out. So just make sure it's in all the way. And there's two screws over here, the short one and the long one. The long one goes in the front, just like that. And yes, I'm going to start this screw with the impact. And I just run it in. This one goes right here in the back. Right there, run it in. There you go. Now, the next thing we do is we're going to put this engine assembly back onto the main pipe. This cable, this drive cable, it's flexible, okay? And it's got a square on the end. I don't know if you all can see that on the camera, but it's square. And inside the clutch drum on the engine, is a female square and this male has to fit right into the female square. We're going to put that on there and what I do is it went right on that time. Sometimes if it won't go on 
You just have to turn the engine a little bit. See, now it won't go. There it goes, okay? So if you make sure that your weed eater head and handle are all level, then you get your four millimeter Allen and tighten up the clamp bolt. Make sure that your engine is level and in line with the handle and the head and just snug that up nice and tight. Next thing we do, we bring up our throttle cable and kill switch assembly. We install this right into here, run that down with our finger, get our 10 millimeter wrench and just snug that up. Just like that. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is open up the throttle. Now, on these carburetors, it uses a barrel end on the cable and you have to make sure that you get the right end because it can turn this way or this way. If you have it turned the wrong way and you try to put that cable in there, what happens? And I don't know if I got it the right way or the wrong way. We're going to find out. If it goes in, then it's the right way. But if it doesn't go in, see how that cable end is sticking out of there? That's the wrong way. So we're going to pop it out of there, turn this barrel 180 degrees, and fit that cable right back in there. Release the carburetor. And see how it went right in that time? That's the right way. If you have it in the wrong way, your weed eater is going to be running almost halfway open. You're wondering why it won't idle. That's why it won't idle. Okay, so now it's always a good idea to put a new air filter in these machines. And I just happen to have one right here. I got a new spark plug too. Did you find that in a dumpster too? Yeah, it was right next to the short block. What a coincidence. So, this is a two-stage air filter on the SRM280, and it has a little foam filter. Now, my cousin Terrell did a video on how to clean these filters out and oil them. This does not use oil. When the foam filter goes right up against a felt filter, do not use oil. So if you do wash this out, use a few drops of that blue dishwashing liquid, squeeze it out and foam it up real good and get all that dirt out of there. Rinse it out real well and then squeeze it in some paper towels to suck all that moisture out of there. Then we put this in. Now here's something that some folks may not know. You see that plastic rib going across? That goes across this way, not this way. Like that, not that. Just a little quick tip there for you. We put the two-stage air filter together. We get our air filter cover right here. And see this right here, Mr. Cameron? See where it says cold start and run? That lines up with choke assembly. So we put that on there, get it all lined up. We can snug that down. Now don't gorilla with that. It's just a little screw, just get it snugged up. We have to hook up our kill wire. Now, I made the mistake one time of doing this. And I wonder why I couldn't shut the weed eater off because the kill wires over here weren't connected to nothing. Or if you do this, it'll never start. So make sure you get one from the throttle cable assembly and one from the engine. Slide it in there until it snaps. Get the other one, slide it in there until it snaps. And you can just tuck them up underneath there some nice way. Okay? Then, I think we just need to put a spark plug in this thing. This uses an NGK BPM8Y. Now, some folks out there will put a champion spark plug in these. Don't do that. The reason is you'll lose 800 to 1,000 RPM on the top engine speed. I've seen it. I've tested it. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. So here's a new spark plug. I thought you never worked on one of them before. Well, I watched a video or two on YouTube. So, I already checked the gap on this. It's 0.026 thousandths of an inch. Now, I don't do none of that metric stuff, so don't ask me what it is in millimeters. You can do the conversion. Google it. So we put the spark plug in the spark plug hole. Get our spark plug wrench. 
snug it up, install our kilt or ignition wire there, and now we are ready to start this thing up. Okay, we have some proper fuel and oil mix in this engine. All we have to do is push the primer bulb a few times, put the choke on, and pull the rope. Get this thing started. Huh, why isn't it starting? Huh. Thought it did everything right. Huh. Oh, I guess it would help if I had the kill switch on. And that's all there is to short blocking an SRM 280T. And there's your dinner. I don't know if I'm impressed or depressed, but I gotta hand it to you, Gerald Jack. You did a good job. Ha! Ah, yeah! I was surprised he was able to do it, Pa. Well, he is family, Junior, and two-cycle oil runs through our veins. Well, thank you, Terrell, for letting me use your shop. I guess I'll see you at the next family reunion. No, you won't. Now pack up your crap and your fancy tools and get out of here. And I better not catch you digging around in my dumpster. <gasps> Jack, what are you doing in Cheryl's dumpster? Treasure hunting. Nice find. Save some for me. Yeah.